Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. My last video that looked at another possible entrance into the underground passages of the Great Pyramid from the outside via a canal got a fantastic response from viewers, so I just want to take a brief look at the ancient canals of Giza. Egyptologists don't doubt their existence, in fact, Mark Lehner even found evidence of a port next to the pyramids, a port that had to be connected to a man-made waterway as the River Nile was too far to the east. During the inundation, a time when the Nile floods, the ancient Egyptians could steer boats to what was a major port city at the pyramid complex. Lehner explains how these boats were used to transport stone, and they were therefore used for building the pyramids. But whether you believe that the pyramids are Old Kingdom or not, these canals did exist in dynastic history, and we know that the ancient Egyptians were builders, so these canals would have been crucial to transport blocks of stone. The Diary of Mira shows how a work gang was transporting stone from the Chura limestone quarries to a location known as Akhet Khufu in the 4th dynasty. Some believe that Akhet Khufu is specifically the Great Pyramid, but looking at the evidence, it does suggest that this is the name of a region, which I believe is Giza. I'll link a video below that explains this in more detail. The ancient Nile floodplain around Giza is now covered by sand, the urban sprawl of Cairo, and villages such as Nasla el Saman. But these illustrations developed by Lena show that in the Old Kingdom times, Giza looked very different to how it looks today. It was more of a water world than a desert. And, furthermore, climatological studies also show that it rained a great deal at this time. Evidence suggests that Giza was far greener in the days of Khufu than it is in the modern era. When the Nile was in flood, water would go all the way up to the ridge that surrounds the plateau, where I think there must be another entrance into the lost subterranean compartments of the Great Pyramid, and also the lost tomb of King Khufu. For more on this, please see my previous video that's linked below in the description. But when the Nile wasn't in flood, lagoons, pools of water and also canals would still exist, the latter due to their connection to the Nile River further south. But, all year round, these canals would only be used for transportation to get around the cataracts of the river. Tolls could also be implemented for people to use them, and this would be like an ancient road tax for the king. Studies have shown that the Valley Temple and Sphinx Temple would have stood on the shoreline of Giza's central canal, which reached all the way up to the tomb of Kenkawe. In fact, the Valley Temples of the three Giza pyramids show you visually how close the water came to the pyramids in the Old Kingdom. More than 4,000 years ago, the Nile was 5 miles closer to the pyramids compared to where it is today, and the engineers of the Old Kingdom saw an opportunity to exploit this to aid transportation, building projects, irrigation and so on. From August to November the Nile flooded, and before the Aswan Dam was built, the waters rose 23 feet. Here is how Giza would have looked in the 4th dynasty. The flood waters filled the canals and harbours up to the margins of the Giza Plateau. This would be the peak time for building projects, not just at Giza but also right across the ancient kingdom. Between April and May, the Nile was at its lowest. The water wasn't deep enough for heavy cargo to sail on the man-made canals, but it would be deep enough for boats with shallow drifts. Therefore, the canals were mainly used for transportation and not construction at this time. There is evidence of an ancient port, a terraced basin, which was located close to the Sphinx, next to the Kenkawe town. The terraces were dug to provide various levels to unload cargo based on the level of the River Nile. Archaeologists also found evidence of ramps in the basin's corners. You could reach any of the valley temples, the ancient port, and to come within 100 metres of the northeastern margin of the Great Pyramid by using the man-made canals and it is also possible that water was allowed in between the Valley and Sphinx Temple to fill the Sphinx enclosure itself with water, but this would have only been possible during the inundation. Egyptologists used the canals as part of the puzzle for how the pyramids were made. 
Various studies have shown how even the largest granite blocks of the King's Chamber could have been transported to the margins of the pyramid by boat, using both the Nile River and the canal system. As I showed in a previous video, engineer Jean-Pierre Houdin has shown how the Great Pyramid could be constructed without the need of lost technology, including how the huge blocks of Aswan granite could reach the higher echelons of the Great Pyramid, by exploiting the higher topography of the Giza Plateau to the southwest. He also showed how the Grand Gallery, and also maybe the Large Pyramid Void, are in fact constructional features that were used to lever blocks into place. It all works in theory, and in my opinion that's progress. I was always too quick to assume that Old Kingdom Egyptians couldn't build the Great Pyramid. But if you were a king with unlimited resources, intelligent architects, had no great respect for your people, and also if you had the vision, the building of the Great Pyramid would be possible. The only things that remain truly unexplained in my opinion, are certain stone cutting and stone drilling techniques. Ben, who runs the Uncharted X channel, created a fantastic video on the holes drilled in large blocks of granite, and after watching it, I'm totally baffled. Brian Forster has also shown many amazing examples from right across Egypt of high precision stonework in very hard igneous rock that really does defy logic or explanation. And of course, we've all seen the hollowed out vases, bowls and vessels perfectly cut from hard igneous rock. In my opinion, these really are a total mystery. I do have a logical mind that does need an explanation for what we see. I don't believe in ancient aliens, and I still believe there must be a rational explanation for ancient technology, that doesn't include ancient lasers or electric drills. I'm happy to present any viable ideas that are out there, and I'll always keep an open mind, and I'll continue to keep searching for answers. I read so many comments in my videos that the pyramids were not built by the Old Kingdom Egyptians, and that they are in fact between 10,000 and 100,000 years old. And I'm more than happy to take any idea on board if someone can provide me with some real scientific evidence. There are some videos on YouTube that are also riddled with errors, with some saying that seashells are found on the Giza Plateau and also on the pyramids, and therefore the pyramids were once underwater from the Great Flood. But these shells are just fossils in the limestone, some of which have weathered out in their entirety. We have to be careful with what we take as fact, but changing the narrative of history is certainly possible. I'm more than happy to listen to any hypothesis, but if we want to rewrite the history books, we first need a sound hypothesis, and then the hard scientific or archaeological evidence to back it up. I'll end this video with some stunning photographs from Giza, played to the fantastic music of Ross Bugden. Thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.